True Love from True Love Quilts for you. Um, I just washed my hair. Please excuse my wet hair. Um, I have a tutorial probably in two parts today. Um, and my tutorial, I'm going to get right to it. My tutorial is on, it's not a quilt and it's not a beginner project. And as you know, I like to um, tailor my projects or my tutorials to beginners. Um, and I have been doing not a lot in lockdown. We're still in the yellow phase. And I've not been doing a tremendous amount. But I had seen, and, I've, and you know I've been making my little tote bags. But I had seen these little bags. These little, um, little like a triple, uh, a little carry-on triple um, zipper bag. And I've started making them. And I'm doing a tutorial on this bag here. This has like more of an Asian flavor and it's real sweet. It has like a little carry. Well, you open the top zip and in and, and out, out pops three zippered pocket compartments plus a little pocket compartment in there. My tutorial is on this project here, which I will be honest, this uh, when I started embarking on this project, having looked at just a few, um, not even a pattern, having looked on a few tutorials, putting a few things together, I came up with this. Um, it's not new. It's not new. I mean, there are a dime a dozen on, on Pinterest. And, um, but I was trying to figure out. And my process, my, my point is, I was trying to figure out different ways to do different things. Because as I say, it's not a beginner's project. This was the first bag I made. I'm quite pleased with it. Um, as I said, it has a, a 22 inch zip. I tell you what, every, everything you need, and then you open it up. Now, I'm going to make this tutorial in two parts, and excuse me if you, if, when I just stop, um, and I will say that's the end of that tutorial, because I was just filming, f filming here, cutting and going to my machine. This, this took me about three and a half hours, and, and trying to figure it out. Um, it's not hard, but it's very fiddly and it's very awkward. This part here, which I've not even gotten right. Um, I, as, I, as I said, these are sort of my prototypes, um, but I'm very thrilled with the way they've turned out. But each one I've done, I figured out how to enclose the zipper. The zipper tab's not enclosed there. Um, they look awesome. I, I'm very thrilled with my first attempt. Oh my word, really, really good. But as I went on, I learned some different things, which hopefully right now I'll pass on to you um, because I got it sort of wrong on my tutorial. I didn't get it wrong because it turned out lovely, but I'll tell you what I've done. But first of all, I want to show you, first of all, this was the first one I made, okay? And this was about the fourth one I've made here. But I want to show you this lovely little bag, right? It's so sweet. You know, you're thinking, oh, that's lovely. Well, I just want to show you <laughs> this, how much this bag holds, okay? There's a necklace, all right? Oh, there's a pair of glasses. There's my concealer. There's a hair clip. Oh, there's my inhaler. Let's see what, that's not even in the pockets. Let's see what this, oh, here's another necklace, big necklace. And what's in the second pocket? Oh, here's a pens and lipsticks. Here's a nail clipper and another pair of glasses. Uh, let me see, third pocket. I think you get the idea. Oh, here's, here's some Advil. <laughs> we need that because this was a headache to make. Oh, here's another necklace, quite a large necklace. Oh, here's some essential oil. I need that to calm myself down. Oh, and here's some, here's some uh, dental floss picks. You get the idea. This little bag holds a tremendous amount of things. And for that reason, it, what can you use it for? A craft bag, a sewing bag for a retreat, a jewelry case, a first aid kit, um, baby things, an artist's paintbrushes, even crochet hooks. Um, and, and, or embroidery, needles, all sorts of things in this bag. And as you see, that's the reason I'm doing this is because I, I want to make this a two-part tutorial because I want to show you how this bag is so versatile. And even though my, my directions, my tutorial, and I'm, I'm usually pretty good with tutorials, my tutorial to follow is about, I would say on a, on a scale of one to 10, it's about a, a, a seven or an eight because I 
I wasn't sure how to do this side part. Um, although it, it sort of turned out, it didn't turn out fantastic. And so each one I've made subsequently to my first one have turned out a little bit better. Now I want to explain, and I do explain in the tutorial, or I will put it in a notation when we come to it. On this one, as you can see, it's smaller. This, this, this bag, my about fourth one, I, third one I made, to that bag is a little bit smaller. Okay, you see that? This was my first one, quite nice size. This one turned out smaller, and I don't really, I, I, I think I know why. I, I think I know why. I made the pockets. Now, if you are going, are you interested in making this tutorial? You have to sort of listen to this. I made the pockets marking them at three and a half inches. I should have only done it three and a quarter, even three inches. You'll understand when you get to that point. I marked from my zipper tab over three and a half inches. So it took it up. And then the, the, the pockets on the top, the bag still closes, but they're very, very close to the top of this little bag here. I've put stuff in this bag to see, and it works because it sort of goes, the construction of it sort of goes flatter. So this still works, but I find this size, and of course this size here, much better. And then I, I, I uh, sort of tweaked it. Now also on this one and this one and this one that I made, I used a purchased double, uh, double fold wide bias binding. Um, on the on this bit here okay and it worked out well it's what I had and I thought oh, it's what I understood when I was making it and I show you again in my tutorial um, but as I start then I started doing uh, then I did oh isn't that sweet they're all different fabrics and I'll come to that what you can use then I did this one and I thought I may I wonder if I a, instead of a purchased binding which I sewed on the front which you'll, I explain, if I did like a, if I did like my regular like quilt binding and sewed it on the inside and turned it around. Again, I will, I sort of will try to explain that to you. Now, when you're constructing this bag, this is the front, obviously. So this bit here of, of whether you use the binding, again, you'll see in my tutorial, or, and this binding is what you see. So the stitching on here and here is important, okay? When you when you turn it around. Obviously the stitches in, it stitches is important everywhere. Um, I happen to have, um, oh, I had gotten about 100 zippers, all different sizes um, online. And so you need, you need three zippers for your three different compartments, three uh, 12 inch zippers. Um, and again, I, I was perfecting my zipper at the, at the beginning, at, at the end, um, because and you could have done like a zipper tab. I don't know how to do that. And it was fiddly as it were. And I'm very, very pleased with this. Now, so these are my lovely little bags. You can make them all in one, one uh, fabric. Now, this one I want to show you. I was thinking, well, I made that too small. I just made this. And I thought, what if I made the outside bit, again, if I made the outside bit bigger? which I did. And then the, pack, the, the pockets sort of just fit inside. And then you could have something even larger. Now, the beauty of these made this way is when you zip it closed, because of the side panels, the entire bag is completely, is completely and utterly enclosed. Everything in there is enclosed. Nothing, nothing is going to fall out obviously out of the pockets, but if you put anything in between the pockets in that little area, it won't fall out when it's made that way. When I made this one a little bit bigger, it's awesome, and I love it, but I, and I'm not bothered. I wouldn't, I would be holding it like more like that as opposed to, because it's, it's slightly open there. Again, the pockets aren't open. The pockets aren't open. The zipped pockets aren't open. Anyway, I'll get to my tutorial. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? So each one I made, I got better. That's what I'm saying. Now, again, my tutorial to follow is for this one. This is a little bit smaller, and I learned that we, we mark at about three to three and a quarter inches. And ever, all of the measurements I give are almost 100%. Um, but as I was going along, again, as I was going along, I was thinking, oh, 
uh, you could use scraps of fabric. It doesn't take a lot of fabric if you just use all different fabrics, which I have done here. Now, I had used, all of these pockets are lined completely different, and the, the fabrics. Now, I had used on this one, I have a lot of 10 inch squares. I had, I, it's either nine or 10, 10 inch squares are in this, are, are in this bag. And I, there's, and, a, and about a third of a yard of yardage for the, for the uh, binding. Um, I had sewn together two 10 inch squares to make this piece, which I think on my measurements measures about 10 by 13 and a half. Obviously bigger than a 10 inch square, but I sewed two of them together. Anyway, um, I'm, I just wanted to show you the different, the different ways to make this. Um, what else did I want to address in the tutorial? I am fast forwarding it one bit. Again, this, this took me about three and a half hours. And this one, the other in the evening, took me about an hour and 45 minutes. It's not fast and it's not beginner friendly. It's not. Um, but do not, even if, you're, even if you're just an advanced beginner, do not be put off by the zippers. It's that that is very, very simple. It's just step by step by step that, to do the zippers. Now, I have used in this, in this application, I have used all of them. I have used a, um, not in this one, I, in all of these, I have used a fusible batting. A fusible batting that has made it a bit softer and then I actually quilted it I've actually quilted the back that the um, I haven't quilted the pockets I've quilted this back here now um, by all means you could use a stiffener interfacing I'd address that whatever interfacing whether you want it very stiff like a Pelon 830 um, craft fused interfacing or um, soft and stable like a more of a, 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 a sturdier bag um, I had gotten, believe it or not, it's in the other room, I had gotten them um, because stabilizers and, and foam uh, for sewing was very, um, were very um, scarce. I had actually got um, car headliner foam. <laughs> and that's in this. I got a whole bolt of car headliner foam and it's very inexpensive. I don't know where I got that idea. But I thought, oh, it's the foam that goes underneath the, the, the cover. So I got a whole bolt of it, a whole bolt, like, like 20 yards of it. But it works exactly like the, the, stable, the soft, and, the soft fusi fusibles. It's not fusible, of course, but you can, you can quilt through it. And that's that. That is car headliner foam under there. Anyway, um, these are my little bags. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Um, again, I think I'll do it in two parts. And it's not a perfect in a tutorial. Um, I'm not rushing it, but I'm sort of rushing it. Um, but as you can see, I am so thrilled. Now, what am I going to do with all these bags? I just wanted to let you know that, again, if you've been following, you realize I have a um, Patreon account where my, where my patrons who pay me a tip, as it were, um, over on Patreon, they, it, the, when they, when they um, go to their Patreon account, it sort of unlocks specific tutorials that I do just for my patrons who are very kind. And every month I will do a tutorial for my patrons and then on my tutorial I will get I will gift them who whoever I choose the winner um, to win that month's tutorial. Just a little tutorial, just a little project. Well, this month I am sending I think I think I'm sending three of my bags. I'm selecting three winners, not this one because I'm not I'm not thrilled with that one. But I'm selecting three winners of my, on my Patreon, who everybody can see this, but I'm going to select three winners of my patrons to win each one of these bags. Someone's going to win that one, someone's going to win that one, and that one's going to wing their way to somebody. So that's how it works. So this video is open to everyone. I thought, I'd be fair, let, let everybody see this. <coughs> but my patrons, who have been very kind in supporting me monetarily, um, three are, three winners are going to get this uh, one of one of these uh, bags. So and then I'm going to keep the other ones, and this one is a present. But they're so fun to make; they really, really are. Other news, real quick: we have gotten an offer on our home, um, the home that was for sale, our family home. I was a little bit lower, but at this point, um, not that much lower, but it was a little bit lower. At this point, we are we are pleased. 
um, instead of paying yet more mortgage and taxes and utilities and, and maintenance on the property. Um, it's been a six month, uh, a six month bit of an ordeal. <laughs> Uh, trying to ready our house but we did get an offer so we'll see how that goes as I was saying um, we have a swimming pool and that put a lot of people off we knew that we knew that didn't put us off when we bought the house we've always had swimming pools we've always needed a pool but most people don't want a pool and that's what put people off but we got an offer so we're really really thrilled hopefully our home our beautiful home will go to a family who loves it like we did um, so that's that's been exciting stressful but exciting um, we're still here we're still in the yellow zone trying to make sense of things stay safe I'm pretty much staying home um, and I've just been I just been, again I didn't want to get stuck into a, another huge project um, but this was this was sort of a huge project <laughs> but I was sort of hooked I love making them and I, I will make them now with my quilt binding and maybe on the, in the second half I will try to explain how I did that um, but this is going on long enough um, so I will put up this video and I, I didn't I, I, I didn't make it I didn't film with the thought of making two videos so I'll, I'll just cut it off at, at that we're at the halfway point and then I'll do a part two for you because it is long and um, as you know as I, I like long things so those of you who like my long tutorials don't mind um, and thank you so very much for everything keep safe um, go over to my patrons, become a patron, and maybe one of you can win, <laughs> win, a, win one of my bags. This is my giveaway um, for my kind patrons. I'm going to keep them. I think they're, they're pretty. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this tutorial to follow. And again, thank you so much. All right, see you. Have a good day. So these are the fabrics that we're going to be using for our little bag here. And I'm going to explain. You're going to be... You're going to be wanting to um, have a variety of fabrics if you want. Now, this is the bag I've already made. And as you can see, I have all these different fabrics. By all means, you could use all the same fabrics and perhaps if you wanted a different lining inside. But I've, do, I've done this to use up bits and not scraps, but smaller pieces of fabric, even fat quarters of, and I mean, um, 10 inch squares, of fat quarters. Um, some yardage here by all means if you want to use one fabric or another fabric I'm doing a I'm doing the tutorial on all these different fabrics and all of these different seams I mean all of these different zippers here okay so my my outer fabric as you can see is my jewel tone so now what it is is I'm going to explain what exactly you need for our outer fabric my which is my jewel tone you're going to be cutting one piece 10 inches by 13 inches that's this black fabric that i'm using rather like an asian feel for my outer fabric i'm also cutting one piece of interfacing and as i've explained in the beginning whether you use fusible whether you you use um batting or whether you use a stiffer interfacing it's up to you i am using a sort of a a fusible uh batting this is a thinner weight fusible batting. By all means, you could use fleece. Um, this piece we are going to be quilting. So as you see, I have quilted the outside of my fabrics. The, the, the um, pockets here are padded with the, fat, the um, batting, but they are not quilted. So for our pocket fabric, which on my bag here is this, these different color fabrics here. The green, the orange, the pink, and the yellow. Um, I'm, this is what I'm using. I'm using one, two, three, four pieces of different size fabric, of, of different color fabrics. My pink, my green, my purple, my orange. And I have cut them at 10 inches by eight and a half inches. My interfacing, again, I'm using my fusible batting, is cut the exact same, 10 inches by eight and a half inches. That's for my pocket. Now for my pocket lining, which on this bag is my black and white dot. I have chosen to use a white, well, blue on white dot. You're going to be cutting from my pocket lining, you're going to be cutting six pieces, 10 inches by four and a half inches. Okay, 10 inches by four and a half inches. 
for the outside of my bag here, which the outside of the pockets here, I've chosen the same exact fabric as the outside, but I'm chosen, I've chosen because I ran out of this one, I'm chosen, I'm choosing a different lining fabric. So this, this bit here on my bag that I'm going to be making is this hot pink here. So we're, for, you are going to be cutting out of our lining, if you have the same or different, you're going to be cutting two each of the lining and the outer fabric, 15 and a half inches by four and a half inches. Then you're going to be needing, I've cut these way too big, but just a piece, a couple pieces, three by five for our zipper tabs, which is this little thing here. I cut them real big and then I, I cut them down, but I'm, 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 I make them big. Um, and then I, I cut them down to size because I don't like fiddling with this little thing here. So that's our zipper tabs. You're going to be needing, as this bag is here, this is a 22 inch zipper. This wraps around this bag. This is a 22 inch zipper from tab end to tab end. So I have a 22 inch polyester nylon zipper, a polyester zipper, I should say. I have also three different color zippers. Again, if you wanted to use the same exact color zipper, you're by all means, my three zippers are the three zippers that I've chosen to the different colors on the top of my pockets. One, two, three. I've chosen the purple, yellow, and the blue, and these are 12 inch zippers. We are going to cut them down. So you're gonna be needing four zippers. You're also going to be needing for the bias binding here, the double, the, uh, uh, one pack of, you can make it yourself, but I'm using a bias tape, extra wide double fold bias binding that creates the sides of our bag and encloses our zipper top. So that is, these are the things that you're going to be needing to make our bag. So now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go on to the next bit. Now to save time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my ironing board and on both my outside fabric here and my pocket fabric, I'm going to take my four pieces of fusible for me, my fusible interfacing, whatever you're using, fusible interfacing. If you use a stiffer interfacing, your bag is going to be stiffer. Mine is sort of cushy because I'm using a soft iron-on batting. All I'm going to do now is on all, on the, the outside and my four pockets, I'm going to, on the wrong side of my fabric, I'm going to take my fusible fleece here, get it the right way, my fusible uh, batting, and I'm going to put the, the, the glue side, the, the, the coarser side, that has the glue dots on it, I'm going to iron that to the wrong side of my fabric on all four of my pockets, making sure that really fuses, as you know me, really fuse that so that becomes one with the fabric on the top. Okay, I'm going to do that with all four of these, and I'm also going to do it on my outside fabric. The nubbly side here to the wrong side of my outside fabric. I'm going to go over to my ironing board and really iron that well. I have fused my interfacing, or my interfacing to my, my, uh, pocket pieces, and if at this point you just want it random, you want to pull from random, that's fine, but if, if you want to make sure that perhaps that, that this side, the paint, the, um, the, this, this piece here is one of maybe your favorite fabrics, you want to put them in order of how you're going to be sewing them. So I want my pink here, and then the, the green at the very end there. If you just do it random, it's fine. Now, what we're going to do, I really messed up here on my seam, on my zippers here, and I had to think about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my machine. Um, we're going to be sewing our zippers on, and whatever, whatever, again, whatever order you deem them to be. I think I'll put my yellow between my yellow and my purple. But for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my zipper. These are 12 inch zippers. I made the mistake and I've messed up right there on these bags. I didn't know what to do with the zipper ends and I know you can make a zipper tab and a, a zen. I don't, I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is I'm just going to open up my zipper and get my scissors here and I'm going to cut them just about a quarter of an inch smaller than the actual seam allowance here. I'm going to, I'm going to cut. I, I don't want this zipper end here in my seam allowance. So I am going to cut off the tab, the uh, metal part of that zipper right there. Now, 
be very careful to just leave your zipper halfway opened <laughs> because I didn't and I, I pulled the zipper fly right off. I pulled the zipper tab right off. So when I go to sew this, as you can see, I am about a quarter of an inch away from the end and I'm not going to be catching this zipper end in, I, I think, I think that's, I think it's going to work out okay. If it doesn't, it doesn't, but this is, I think I want, I don't want all that bulk up there in the zipper end right there and that's just going to go right into this, the seam. So just like that, about a quarter of an inch and the same exact thing over here at this, at this end. I should be pinning this. So right about there, by all means, pin it or take your um, clips and mark it like that. So Mayan, I just have to, actually I just have to, cu I have to cut this end just, just a little bit more, but I'll do that when I go over to my, my iron, my, um, my um, sewing machine. So I'm at my machine and what I've done, as you can see, I have cut off my zipper, keeping the tab very firmly in the middle. Don't be zipping it off the end of, or you'll be messed up. So with my teeth down, I have done this a dozens of times. If you've watched me on any of my tutorials, this is how you install a zip. So what I'm going to be doing is for this time, I'm going to just go on the, I'm not even put a zipper foot on. I'm going to go on to this end of that zipper right there. I'm, I'm matching teeth down tab down and I'm just matching up the edge of this zipper up on the raw edge of the, the 10 inch side of my pocket the 10 inch side okay I'm just just going right right close to the edge and then right off now if you've seen me install zippers before you know that this is what we do what we want to do is we want to enclose that zipper between the front of the fabric and the pocket the, the back of the fabric the lining so what now we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of our pocket lining which we've cut six of and we're going to put that again 10 inch side 10 inch side and now we're just going to go a bit closer to the teeth of the zipper the raw edges pretty side to pretty side we are enclosing this zipper so I have not even pinned it by all means if you want to clip it or pin it you can but we've cut this beautifully now I can feel that my tab is there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my needle down and I'm going to open this up I'm going to open up that zipper tab straighten everything out very very important I am sitting as I always say I'm sitting directly in front of my sewing machine directly in front of my sewing machine so I I'm not off to the side it's so much easier if you do that so this is exactly what we want to happen our zipper is enclosed there okay and that's one side of our zipper now we don't have to worry about top stitching that I'm going to top stitch everything at the very end so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take my I'm going to close this zipper and I'll show you the next okay so next one I got messed up right there so what I'm going to do now is again always visually my next piece in my pocket is my lavender one and what you always want to remember is pretty side goes to pretty side so again we want to visualize what this is going to look like ah yes there's my zipper so what I'm going to do is because I can't see it I'm going to flip this over and what's important now is to line up the top of the zipper with the top of that the top of their lavender but now I want to make sure that my sides are all straight. I've cut my, I've cut my 10 inch, 10 inch pieces beautifully. And then, then I know if my sides are nice and straight right there, that my zipper is exactly where it should be. And again, I'm just going to do that slightly on the outside. Not, I don't have my zipper foot. I, I, I don't have a zipper foot on needle down and I'm going to open up my zipper again and just finish sewing it and again we're just going to be taking our lining this is what we have here exactly what we want but now we have to enclose that zipper so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going taking our lining pretty side to pretty side in, on top of the zipper you see that just like we did the other one we're enclosing the zipper we're matching the ends of our fabric and I'm turning it over again because now I can see I can see where I stitched and now I'm going to go a little bit closer 
to the zipper teeth. Everything is out of the way. I'm aligning this top of my fabric up, making sure that other lining is out of the way. Feeling where my zipper pull is. Don't whack your your um, presser foot. Make sure everything is all lined up. And this is what we end up with on the outside and then on the inside. Oops. On the inside. We're going to go over and press that when we're, when we're done. So, oh, 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 careful, 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 careful. So now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to continue doing is I'm going to, I'm going to work up from here. I'm going to just get this out of the way and I'm going to start again with my, with my next zip. Let me see. I'll do the um, orange. I'll do the blue one. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to trim off my zip. I'm going to put this in the middle. Be careful. Don't slide your slider off. I'm going to trim this off. I'm just going to continue the next two zippers. So I'm on to my next zipper here. And I'm just going to continue the same way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my zipper. And I'm going to cut off right below the metal stops there. I'm going to just do this at my machine right here. And then I'm going to make sure I don't open up that zipper. I'm going to make sure that that's about a quarter of an inch off of, away from the top of my fabric there. And just on the side, just to anchor my zipper, I'm going to just stitch that along there. Press your foot up, needle down, the edge of my zipper. I'm going to come along to the end. And I find that if I do it this way, I can actually see what I'm cutting off and where I want to cut it off there. So I'm going to cut that right there. And I'm going to go right to the end. And again, what do we do? We are going to be sandwiching. We're going to be sandwiching our lining fabric. We're going to be sandwiching, I should say, our zipper inside of our lining fabric. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this over. Get all, the, all of this other stuff away. And we're going to line this end up with that bit of lining fabric. The 10 inch end right there. Make sure. And then I'm going to just come in slightly where my other, I can see my other stitching. Line this end, the roll edges up. Making sure I can feel my zipper tab. Open up my zipper tab. Just halfway past that presser foot. Don't want to flip it off the end. I have done that. <laughs> And because I have done that before, what I have done here, I just wanted to show you. And so I just, I'm careful not to do that accidentally. What I do is I put a safety pin on either end to remind me not to flip off this, <laughs> to, to flip the um, end of my, the, my zipper pull off. So I turn that onto the inside right there. And again, what do I want to do? I want to take my, my, my other fabric, my orange fabric here. And what I want to do is I want to put the pretty side to the pretty side and what we're going to be doing is we are enclosing this zipper but this time we turn it over so I can see what I'm doing and as you can see as you, as you can see my if my sides match up perfectly then I know that my zipper is going to match up so I have about a quarter inch down there and I have a quarter inch up there and again my teeth are down onto the right side of the fabric the pretty side Coming up to the zipper tab. And I'm just going to repeat this until I finish all three zippers. I have installed my three zips 
and I've gone over to my ironing board and as you can see I've pressed my lining really well and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch just alongside that zipper tape there to just to make it nice I have white thread because I have all I don't feel like putting all different colors but the white will the, the white will be fine but I, what I do have to do is I just for now just for the second I have to remove this zipper end as it were and be very careful just tug your your uh, lining out make sure it's nice and smooth underneath and then just top stitch along there about an eighth of an inch and I find I don't even have to move, re move my zipper tab but I will put this back <laughs> I have I have messed up I have pulled zipper tabs off and it's just a sickening feeling so I'm just going to continue doing <laughs> up with our four lovely pieces of fabric and the insides of our lining our pocket lining all lovely and top stitched now we're going to turn it over what we're going to be doing is we're going to be marking I have a hopefully this will work <laughs> I have a what we're a, a white marker what we're going to be doing is we are going to from this from where the edge of the green fabric here from my, the, where the zipper is sewn into my fabric, right there. I'm going to be marking three and a half inches. One, two, three and a half, right on that line where my fabric is being stitched onto my teeth. Okay, I'm gonna mark on the top of my fabric here with a line with my, hopefully this marker will, yeah, it's, it, you, can't, I, you can't see it, but I can see it. I'm gonna do that on all of my that on all of my um, bits here I'm going to go over I'm going to go over I'm going to find my three and a half one two three and a half on the edge of that orange right there lining it up nice and straight and I'm going to mark this you could do this with chalk or a, a, a marker hopefully yeah that white you can see that I'm going to do the exact same thing and I'll just continue marking my outside of my fabric with three and a half inches. There you go, I'll continue. So I have finished marking my fabric here. Now what we're going to be doing, I'm going to turn it around to, so I can see it. I'm going to be matching up that line with this line. And basically, it's the pattern has been done for us, so you just sort of turn the zipper to the top edge, smoothing all of that lining underneath, smoothing all your bits underneath. And then basically, you can see that if you pin, lining your sides up, if you pin on that white line, it goes perfectly to that white line there. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch right on that white line and then that creates our first pocket in there. You see that? That will create our pocket. We will continue doing that, making sure our lining is nice and smooth and out of the way. We will continue doing that on all three pockets, making sure our lining is out of the way. The other side of the lining, we want that to go that way. And I'm going to take my pin, marking up the sides, put that pin in right there, and that, oh, well, almost, <laughs> that, fix, fix the top of the line, to the zipper right at the top. And there you go. It goes right to that white line that I've marked. So I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to stitch right on my chalked line on all three of my pockets. So I have stitched my lines together. And as you can see, it's starting to resemble my bag over here. Um, I, there is my, without taking the zip, whacking the zipper tab off there is my pocket in there with the polka dot lining on that one here is my my pocket here 
with the polka dot lining and here's my pocket here and this will come this this will be this bit this here and that green will be this bit over here now what you want to do now is after we've created our pocket bottoms what we're going to do is we're going to be stitching if you have a zigzag which I don't I'm not getting my other machine out you're wanting to zigzag close to this edge here to close up your pocket sides I'm just going to be doing a straight stitch and closing up my pocket sides here okay where they're open I'm just raw edge pretty side of the lining to the pretty side raw edges out I'm just about a quarter of an inch in I'm just going to close up my pocket sides on both sides So I, this is what I have ended up with. What I've done is I've sewed. I don't know if my zipper is going to be okay. I don't know. It's sort of hanging out there again. I don't know if it's going to be enclosed. Um, it may be enclosed when I do this. I'll see. I, 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 might, I might have to say I don't know what I'm doing there. <laughs> but anyway, um, it looks nice because this, it turned out like this one also. But anyway, this this here is my inside pockets okay this is it's becoming my inside pockets and what I've done is I've sewn along the side seam here from that down to that down to the stitching line down to each pocket down from the top to the stitching line back back stitching from there up to the stitching line from there to the stitching line and then we have made our entire